Rick Renner and I just sat down and recorded several teachings and several interviews and communicating about so many pertinent events ranging from the days of Noah to the crazy alien stuff that's going on. We, we talked about stuff that he and I have never really talked about before. And we did a series of them that will last all week. And what I want you to do is really listen intently and don't miss one morning this week because we are going to go into some very powerful information every single day. I hope you'll join us. I hope you'll watch intently every single morning this week as we go into these topics because I know it's a now word and you need to be saturated with what we're talking about, the Word of God. I know it's going to be a blessing to you. Would you do me this favor? Please repost this. Share this with someone. And I know it's going to be a great blessing to them and many others. Now, if you would, please join me for this morning's broadcast. I know this is going to bless you. Watch this. Man, I have a very special broadcast for you today, and I have a very special guest for you that we're going to get into in just a moment. If you would, right away, please repost this, share this somewhere, because I know what we're going to get into is going to be powerful and profound. We're going to be talking about the Antichrist, his appearing, and kind of the whole season that we're in and where this is headed. I believe God's favor is with you as you listen to this. I think it's going to really help you. Please repost this. I want to say a huge thank you to those of you who partner and you're a part of this. It's because of you that we're reaching so many people. And I just want to simply say thank you. And of course, if you want to join our partner family, you do so by going to josephz.com or you can text the keyword give to 719-259-0029. And I just bless you for being here. Please repost this and help me welcome, if you would, my dear friend and honestly, a spiritual father to me, Rick Renner. Hey, Joseph. Rick, thank you for being here. Can I say a word right? Please, please. You know, this building is amazing. And as partners, you have helped Joseph and Heather and Z Ministries do this. And this is my first time to be here. And I want to tell you, it is amazing. And if you're a partner with this ministry, you're really sowing seed into really good ground. I'm a very dear friend of Joseph's. We talk almost every day, and I'm not kidding. And these are sincere people. And you know, sometimes when you see people online, you wonder, well, what are they really like? They're the real deal. And I'm so thrilled to walk through this building today and to see what they, with your help, are doing. And I just want to say thank you. And be faithful and keep supporting them and help them pay off this facility. It's just amazing. So I just personally wanted to say thank you to you. Wow. Thank you, Rick. That was gracious of you. I, I'm so glad you're here. You know, I anticipate every time that we're together. It's my favorite. It's just a blessing to have you. You've spoken into Heather and I's life, you and Denise both. And, uh, you know, you, you really are a spiritual father to me. You've been a great leader and example for us. I'm just so happy you're here. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you for being here. Joseph, how did you first <clears throat> hear about me? My goodness, I listened to you for about 20 years, Rick. Hmm. I'd, I would, um, Heather, actually, I told her about you. She listened to you um, day and night. And then she said, you've got to hear this, this man. He's so transparent. He's such a good teacher. He's hilarious. And he's just so clear. And hmm. so then I got hooked. Wow. I, I started listening and reading everything. And then what really tipped it over for me is your Light and Darkness series. Mm. Um, when you came out with, well, actually, I'll show everybody. It's the, right there. It's right here. So these books here, I'll look right at you. Let me look right at you. See, this book here is The Light and Darkness by Rick Renner. There's two of them. And I read this. And I'll tell you what, I fell in love with the book of Revelation because of these books. And so much and most of what I know about the book of Revelation really comes from you. Hmm. And I'll tell you, if you guys want to get these, you can get them at, I think, renner.org. Re renner.org. Renner.org. And I'll tell you, these are And phenomenal. volume two is called No Room for Compromise. And that's excellent. It's about Pergamum. It's about Pergamum. And you know, when I wrote that book, I didn't realize it is really prophetic. It is. Because I talk about paganism being reawakened in society. And that's what we're facing right now with all this wokeism. It's paganism. Yeah. And that kind of leads to your topic today. It, it does. But I'll tell you, I just, I love these books. So Thank you. So that being said, um, many people ask us this. They ask the question and, you know, we're not trying to solve all the world's problems here today, but... Many people ask about the Antichrist. You know, uh, everything from we 
you know, I never use the, some terminology because of our broadcast, but, you know, I call it the mark of the beast precursor practice serum. People thought, oh no, am I getting the mark of the beast? Am I having this happen? Or is the antichrist here? Is the antichrist this person? Is the antichrist that person? I would like to just talk about the coming of the antichrist mm -hmm. and just kind of get into that a little bit. And so starting out, Rick, the antichrist can't show up today. Mm -hmm. Is that your position? That's correct. Okay. You know, Joseph, people do a lot of series on the coming of Jesus. Right. Several years ago, I did a series called The Coming of the Antichrist. <laughs> I'd never heard anybody teach on that. I did right. 10 programs on the coming of the Antichrist. Right. And it's my personal conviction that he cannot make his appearance until the church is raptured. Yes. Now, we have friends who believe in the pre-trib rapture. Yep. We have friends who believe <clears throat> in a mid-trib rapture. Right. We have friends who believe that the rapture won't happen at all. <laughs> but you know what? Whether there's a pre-trib, mid-trib, or it comes at the second coming of Jesus, we're only talking about a difference of seven years. I know it. People are splitting hairs over seven years. I know it. But there's going to be a catching away of the church. It's coming eventually. And the Bible tells us very clearly in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that it will happen during a time of apostasy. So can we open our Bibles? Let's go. Come you on, know, man. I always do the Bible. We always do the Bible. So let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and I want us to look at verse 1. Okay. Now, the Apostle Paul had been to Thessalonica, and he had only been there a few months. Okay. What is totally amazing is in the few months that he was there, as he established them in the faith, he taught them about end-time events. Yes. Now, you would think in just a couple months of all the things you have to teach, why would you teach that? But Paul believed it was that important. And it was also because there was a letter being circulated. There, was. That correct? there yeah. was. And that's what I want to show you. Oh, thank you, sir. So let's go there. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now, we, I'm reading from the King James Version. Yep. Now, we beseech your brethren by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering unto him. Verse 2. That you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, mm. as that the day of Christ is at hand. And apparently, somebody in the church was prophesying that Jesus had already come and they had been left behind. Wow. And there was a problem with false prophets in the church of Thessalonica. Okay. In 1 Thessalonians, Paul tells them to test prophecies, to hang on to what is good, to reject what is bad. So somebody in the church there was operating prophetically, but not accurately. Okay. And it was really upsetting a lot of people. Interesting. And it must have been somebody notable, or they wouldn't have been so shaken by it. Because they were believing it. They were really believing it. Wow. And somebody was circulating a letter, it seems, saying, look, we even have a letter from Paul, mm. saying that the day of the Lord has already come. And Paul says, ignore it. It's not from me. Don't let people upset you. Yes. And Joseph, honestly, we're living in a day when people are watching the internet, YouTube, and social media, and there's all kinds of nonsense out there. There is. And I watch it regularly yep. because I want to know what people are saying. Okay. And you know what? If you're not established in Scripture, oh my, it could really shake you. It could. It could pull you down the wrong road. I find it interesting when you're talking about this, because even in the church of Ephesus, which I learned from you, they would have many people coming along saying, I'm an apostle, right. I'm a prophet, and right. to the point they had to test them. So could it be that this letter, Rick, was to gain followers like out of fear? Probably. Okay. Probably. It's just like today. Same just thing Just like today. today. Sure. I mean, human nature is the very same. People yeah. are fear pandering. Yes. And gathering a following. And right. it's amazing how people are attracted to fearful things. It, fearful or sensational. Or sensational. One side or the other, it seems. It's like two ditches. Like either people are saying, it's the end. It's not going to be bad. It's going to be worse. Right. Or they say, or they say, no, it's all sunshine and rainbows and gumdrops. And it's so great. It's the Willy Wonka gospel, Rick. It's like, it's like it's just going to be one or the other, but they don't stand on the balanced Word of God. You've got to come back to the Bible. And when you know what the Bible says, you can have peace regardless of what's going on around you. Yeah. So let's go to verse 3. Yes, sir. He says, let no man deceive you by any means. The Greek says, not in any way, in any form, do not let anybody lead you down the wrong track. Wow. Then he says, for that day shall not come except... Mm there come a falling away first, and that son of man, son of sin, be, man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Yep. Well, some people are trying to reinterpret this verse 
to say that this refers to the rapture, a falling away. A falling away. Because it's a Greek word, apostasia. Okay. And it means to be removed. And some people are saying, oh, this means, it, this is a reference to the rapture. But Joseph, it's not. It really describes an apostasy. And when you interpret words in the New Testament, mm -hmm. you have to follow the history of a word to find out how that word should be interpreted. Okay. And that word, apostasia, which is used here, is used in the Old Testament always to describe rebellion or mutiny. Wow. And so what Paul prophesies in this verse is at the end of the age, there's going to be a worldwide mutinous attitude mm. against the authority of God. Okay. Well, we're seeing it. We are seeing it. We're living in a worldwide mutinous moment. It's true. It's like the days of Noah. It's, it's, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. We'll That's get into that later. Coming soon. Yeah. But it goes on to say that before the rapture takes place, first there's going to be a falling away. There's going to be a worldwide mutinous attitude yep. first. Yes. So that tells us that the rapture of the church is going to occur in a worldwide pretty bad moment. Wow. And that man of sin be revealed. Mm. And the word revealed is the Greek word apokalupsis. It's a compound of two words, the word apo, which means away. Mm -hmm. The word kalupsis is from kalupto, and it usually describes something that's veiled or something that is hidden. It's the same word we use for the book of Revelation. Got it. Apokalupsis. Apocalypse. Apocalypse. Very good. Okay. So according to this, the man of sin, who is the Antichrist, mm -hmm. will be veiled. Yes. And he will be veiled, you're going to see in just a moment, until the rapture of the church. And then in that moment, the curtain will be pulled apart. And this man that is already stand, standing center stage, the spotlight will fall on him and suddenly he'll be known. Wow. And Paul says it will happen uh, exactly during the rapture of the church. So right. let's go on. Let's go on. Okay. Yes, sir. So then he describes this man of seal whom he calls the son of perdition. Okay. Isn't that interesting? It is interesting. Because the word perdition is the word apoleia. It describes something that's rotten. Oh. It's the same word you would use to describe meat that you left out in the sun. And when you go back to check on it, it's not just stinking. It's filled with maggots. Oh, man. It's rotting. It's oh. decaying. So the Antichrist, the man of sin, will project himself as a progressive thinker, the leader of a new way of thinking. Wow. But in truth, everything he touches will turn to rot. He'll be rotten. Mor just rotten, moral decay. Wow. And then he describes the Antichrist in verse 4, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God. Fascinating. That's very interesting. It is. Because most people say, well, he'll try to oppose Christ. That's why he's called Antichrist. But mm -hmm. this verse says, above all. All. That is called God. Wow. Which means he'll above, he will exalt himself above Christianity, above Judaism, above uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, anything yep. associated with God. He will exalt himself above all of it. Amazing. That's amazing. So he's not against just Jesus. He's saying, no, I am the one God. He is. Amazing. That's what this man of sin is going to do. It goes on to say, all that is called God or all that is worshipped. All that is, so we're talking like tree hugger stuff. Everything. Okay. Everything. So that he, as God, sits in the temple of God, the word temple, the Greek word naos, mm -hmm. which was used primarily to describe the Holy of Holies. Okay. So here we find there's going to be a rebuilt temple. This would be the third temple. Wow. And at one moment, he's going to go into the temple. And Paul clearly says in this verse, he will sit in the naos of God. He will sit in the inner shrine. Mm. He will sit in the Holy of Holies, showing himself that he is God. What in the world? So he's going to be in the Holy of Holies. Basically, how would he show himself? Because of his position? Or because he is going to do an action, he's going to show himself as God. Well, he's going to have lying signs and wonders. I don't know what that is. Got it. But he'll do something to show that he is God. Now, today, there's not a third temple. You know that. Right. But they're making preparations to build a third are temple. Are they really, Rick? Oh, yeah. And, of course, the red heifers are being prepared. Right. And they're preparing everything for Levitical worship. A lot of it's already ready. It's happening. And there are many plans already put into place to build that temple as soon as they have the word to go. That's amazing. And you know, the temple's not so big. It's, it's not, not? It's not big. Wow. It would not take long to rebuild a third temple. Wow. But that's going to happen during the tribulation. It could begin before the tribulation. Interesting. So it could happen during the tribulation. It could though. start right now. 
Okay. But if, but if it started right now, well, that would be a real clear signal that something scriptural is really about to be fulfilled before our eyes. Absolutely. That is, that is remarkable about the temple being restored. Now, one of the things when we talk about this, because, you know, I got to just be honest. Are you guys being as blessed as I am? I, I want to look right at you. Please, if you would, would you repost this, share this somewhere? Because I just got to tell you, when Rick starts to break into the Word of God, we start to go down this avenue, it's going to really help somebody. And I encourage you to shout out, go in red, right on the feed right now, and repost this everywhere, because we're going to get into the next part of this, and it's going to be very powerful for you. So when we're talking about this, you know, a lot of people get into the topic of the rapture. They get into all these things. And many people have said that it could be the thing that's hindering, you know, the, the Antichrist from appearing is not always what we've been taught, that it could be, you know, a specific entity like Michael. It could be a specific entity that, you know, maybe the Holy Spirit is the only thing hindering. Or as you think, and maybe we think, it could be the church that is hindering the Antichrist from appearing. But when this happens, I've heard a lot of people say, if you... When what happens? The rapture. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, when the rapture happens, people begin to say, okay, so if you believe in the rapture, you believe in escapism. You believe in get out of here before the Antichrist comes. You believe that way. And I think that is a kind of a silly point of view because I look at your life. I look at what we're doing and we are working hard for the gospel. We're not looking at it as let's get out of here. We're working hard. Do you, do you feel that way, Rick, about it? Yeah, you know, I recently heard somebody online uh -huh. say that those who believe in a, a, the rapture, that it's a doctrine of devils, they just want to get out of here. Well, look at my life. I know. I'm telling you, I'm working harder than ever. But Joseph, what's wrong with escapism? <laughs> Salvation is escapism. We're escaping hell. That's awesome. There's nothing wrong with escape. What is healing? It's escape from sickness. God is in the business of delivering people. Well, come on, Rick. So there's nothing wrong with that. And people who have a problem with the rapture, they're not thinking straight. They're not. Because the Bible is full of raptures. It is. It's full of raptures. It's not hard for God to rapture one or many. We know that Enoch was raptured. God yep. took him. He was not. That's right. That's the first rapture. We know that Elijah was taken up. He mm -hmm. was raptured. Jesus was raptured. We know the Apostle Paul was caught up into the third heaven. We know that when Philip was preaching, he was caught up by the Spirit, by the way, which is the same word rapture. Yeah. And we know that John was caught up into the third Come heaven where he saw things. And we yeah. know the end time prophets are going to be raptured <laughs> in the book of Revelation. Jesus lifted off the ground. Yeah. Jesus lifted off the ground. Yeah. So what's the problem? I know it. You know, it's, it's interesting, too, because um, people say, well, the word rapture is not in the Bible. It is in the Bible. Harpazo. Harpazo. But it's also in the Latin. That's where we get the word. Is that right? It is. It's the Greek word harpazo, mm -hmm. which in Latin is rapture. Ah. But it means the same thing. Same thing. So it's, we find it in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, caught away. Yes. That's the word rapture. So, but it's all over the Bible. It is all over the Bible. And I really appreciate you saying that because, you know, I, I've kind of held back on the word escapism. But when you say, what's wrong with that? You know, don't, if your house is burning or something's burning, don't you, you want to like, remove your hand from the stove? Absolutely. <laughs> what was the flood and the ark? It was escapism. escapism. <laughs> it, was, it was a way of deliverance. That is so great. And so, you know, some people say, oh, yeah, but, you know, you talk about God's going to deliver us from the tribulation. But <laughs> there are believers that have lived in tribulation all over the world for 2000 years. That is correct. Yeah. And they're in great tribulation now. But there's a seven-year period that's going to be unlike any other period. Oh, my goodness. When wrath is going to be poured out on the earth. And God is not going to subject His people to that wrath. That's they will right. be removed. And this text says that. We are not appointed to wrath. We're not. Come on, Rick. You know, I didn't teach on this for years because I didn't want to offend people. Right. That didn't believe in the rapture. Right. And I finally felt like, you know what, Rick? People need to know. People are listening to so much silliness on the internet. Yeah. They need a clear voice on this. But let's go on. Yes, sir, please. So then it says in verse 5, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Well, that's pretty amazing. Yes. Then in the few months Paul was there, he explained all of this to new believers. All of it in all that short it. amount of time. And then he says, guys, you know what I'm talking about. I've already told you all these things. <laughs> then he reminds them in verse 6, And now you know... What withholds? Come on, Rick. And the word withhold is the Greek word kat echo. It's a compound, the word kata, which carries the idea of a negative force, and the word echo, which means to hold. But when you put the two words together, it means to stall, mm -hmm. to postpone, 
to restrain. Wow. So you could translate this, and now you know what is stalling, what is postponing, what is holding back that he, the Antichrist, might be revealed, and the word revealed is a Greek word, apokalupsis, that a moment will come in his time, this verse says, when the curtains will be pulled apart, and suddenly he will make his grand appearance. And people have been trying to guess who the Antichrist is forever. I know. Just quit trying to guess. Right. Because nobody's going to know until the moment comes when the curtain is pulled apart. That's right. Now, there are a lot of candidates. There's a lot of... Do you think all throughout history there's probably been candidates? There have been a lot of candidates, but it's a distraction and it's a waste of time because nobody's going to know until the church is evacuated, which Paul describes next. Come on. So let's look at verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Well, this was the first century. So there's been a secret, sinister plan at work for a long, long time yep. to bring forth a man who would be a man of iniquity. And like you say, there have been many examples. Hitler was a type. Mm -hmm. Joseph Stalin was a type. Oh, yeah. There have been many, many types. All but the these were just Nimrod. all experiments the devil was playing with getting ready for the real deal. Yes. And only he who now lets will let until it be taken out of the way. Well, of course, that's King James. The Greek would be better translate. Only he who now is stalling, postponing, and restraining will continue to stall, postpone, and restrain until he be taken out of the way. Wow. And the Greek words for taken out of the way means to be removed right from the midst of everything. Really? That's, that's really what it describes. It's right an evacuation right out of the middle of everything. And it portrays the church being everywhere and in everything. But a moment will come when the church, which is the great restrainer, we are stalling, we're postponing, we're holding it all back. The church will suddenly be taken out. Wow. And the next verse says, and then. And then. In that very synchronized moment is what the Greek says. Okay. And then that wicked shall be revealed, apokalypsis, when the church is evacuated, immediately the curtains will be pulled back and this man of iniquity will appear on the stage and he will look like he is the answer to the world's dilemma. But the Antichrist cannot be introduced to the world until the world becomes a lawless place. Okay. He is a man of iniquity. And wow. in the Greek, it's the word lawlessness. Well, a lawful world, a godly world, will never embrace him. So a lawless world will give birth to a man of their own making. Rick, so that is why the world's being marshaled into this state of chaos. It's being modified. It's, getting, it's, it's changing the way it's thinking, getting ready for this man who will produce rot in everything that he touches. Oh my goodness. That's it, what wokeism is. That's what it is. That's what it, it is. It makes me think about where, where it talks about um, because of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. That's correct. And it's, it's almost a fatigue or a crisis fatigue that gets right. on the church. They don't have great teaching. But really, when you fall prey to that crisis fatigue or you don't, as you say, simply continue, mm -hmm. what happens is, is it builds the, the platform for the Antichrist to appear. So we need to stand our ground. We do. We, our job is to be salt and light. Yes. To be light and darkness, to hold back evil. But let's talk about the Great Restraint. Please, sir. Because through the years, there have been several arguments about who is the Great Restraint. Please help us. So the earliest belief was that it was the Roman Senate. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. And they believed that the Roman Senate was holding back the evil powers of the Roman emperor. Okay. But that was not right, obviously. <laughs> no. Then there was a belief that it was Michael the archangel. Okay. Because Michael the archangel is the warrior angel. We find him in the book of Jude contending with Satan over the body of Moses. Right. So he's dealing with evil. Right. But it's not Michael the archangel. Okay. Then there was the belief that maybe it is the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit's the great restrainer, and a moment's going to come when the Holy Spirit's going to be removed but the Holy Spirit is never going to be removed. Amen. We know that because in the book of Revelation, we read there's going to be a great harvest of souls. That's right. Well, there can't be a harvest of souls if the Holy Spirit is removed. Boy, that's so powerful. So there's only one option that remains, and that's the church. It's the church. The pre-tribulation church. The pre-tribulation. So it's the ecclesia. It is. Versus the saints in Revelation. In is the that book right? Of Revel that's correct. Okay. But they're going to be raptured too. <laughs> so um, the church is the great restrainer. Now, Joseph, we've talked about this a lot of times. Just imagine if the church suddenly was vacated. My goodness. 
Can you imagine the evil that would just flood into the educational system, the courts, Hollywood, every street, every home, nothing holding it back? Strong delusion would become the norm. It would be the norm. Well, it's already almost the norm. It is. But you know, the church, even with all of its flaws, and the church has a lot of flaws. Yes. And the church will have flaws, so quit picking on the church. You're part of it. You're one of the reasons it's flawed. (laughs) That's right. But one of these days, we'll be perfected when we see Jesus. But even with all of our blemishes, we are powerful. We are. We We, are. We don't know how powerful we are. It's true. Our very presence, even if we do everything wrong, our very presence, because God is in the church, is putting all this evil at bay. Yeah. It's holding it back. Yes. But this verse says, a moment will come when the great restrainer will be taken out of the way. How can you argue with that verse? You can't. That's what what it says. Unless you're a Bible-denying, dishonest person, you can't argue with that. Now, people just argue about when it's going to be. Right. It's pre-trib, mid-trib, into the trib. We're just talking about seven years, so there's going to be a rapture. (laughs) And then, verse 8, That wicked one shall be revealed. The curtains will be pulled back. And the Bible says, whom the Lord will consume with the spirit of his mouth. Man. But look at verse 9. Because you wanted to know how is he going to show himself as God. Please. Well, verse 9 says, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Well, I don't know if he's really going to demonstrate lying uh, supernatural signs. He might. Mm Mm-hmm. Or whether he's going to use AI. Right. Or whether he's going to employ technology. Right. But something phenomenal is going to come with his advent. Yep. And you can see that in the culture already. You know, we look at this and we think, oh, it's going to be supernatural miracles. Maybe it will, like you're saying. It it might be. But the way that they have tech today, you could see how the devil would use, just like to make kind of a leap over to another thought that applies, he uses money because he doesn't have the anointing. Mm-hmm. So he uses things that are natural to marshal it for his benefit. And I believe that that could be why he would use AI. That would be the same way he would use anything that science or this world offers. I think that's a wonderful point. Right I think now. all of it's going to play in this event. Okay. I do. And I'm so thankful that you've been covering a lot of this in your program. Well, I, I appreciate that you um, are a great sounding board. You, you've been wonderful. You've been a great leader and example for so many of us. And, you know, when I when I sneak in and I hear you at conferences or different places, I really enjoy it because everybody references like Rick Renner says. <laughs> and I find great joy in that. And Well, Rick Renner actually believes some things that are pretty far out there. Okay. Uh, I think in the days to come, we're going to see some amazing things. And uh, it's based on the Bible. Oh, it is. But we'll get into that in another program. I can't wait. And so Rick is going to be with me for a couple programs, and I think it's going to be great. So I can, hope... I, can I cover one more thing real quick? Oh, let's go. There's one more important yeah, thing here. Yeah, please. Look, if you would, at verse 11. And for this cause, <laughs> God shall send them strong delusion. Yes, I'm glad you're doing That this. they should believe a lie. If you choose to reject truth, God will release you. We see this in Romans chapter 1. God will not make you worship Jesus. God will not make you get saved. God is so good, he'll let you do what you want. He'll plead with you not to, but he won't hold you back. And when the world has fully rejected Christ, the church has been evacuated, God's going to send delusion. He's just going to release it. It's not really that God's going to send it. It's just going to be a release of delusion. He's no longer going to hold it back because the restrainer has been removed. And the word delusion here really describes delusion and people will really believe a lie. And that is a description of a reprobate mind. Yes. So the world after the rapture will just become a reprobate place. My goodness. Filled with delusion. And that's why the Antichrist will be able to do his deal. Yeah. Sorry. Just no, wanted to throw no that not out. sorry. I appreciate that. Rick, I'm so grateful to you. Thank you for teaching so many of us. And um The information, I I wanted to simply say to everybody, were you blessed by this? I hope you're really getting something out of it. If you would, repost this, share this everywhere you can. Rick's going to be with me um, for for a little while this week, and I think it's going to be tremendous for you. So please keep tuning in. Please keep being with us. I bless you in Jesus' name. If you would, repost this, share this wherever you can, and check out renner.org. Now, one thing I wanted to say just before we wind down is you have a book called, um, what is the one on the end times? The Last Day Survival Guide. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's a good book. Oh, it's a great book. I've read it. It's awesome. So the things we're talking about are packed into that book. Some of them. Okay. 
Uh, quite a lot of them. Yep. So let me just say this. Go to renner.org if you would. Get Last Day's Survival Guide. Now, Rick has at, at least 50 books. Maybe he's passed that by now. But I encourage you to get Last Day's Survival Guide. It really helps navigate what's going on. And if you enjoy his teaching, you want to get that book. I bless you. Jesus is Lord. Remember this, on a bad day, you're anointed to be the best there is. And a man or woman with a revelation is not at the mercy of a culture gone mad. We're going to be back again throughout this week. And I encourage you to tune in, to be here with us every single morning. It's going to be powerful. Praise God. God bless you. Please watch this. A last day's culture. And you've got to understand something. Both God and the kingdom of darkness are territorial and you are the hinge pin. You are absolutely the emissary, the free moral agent of permission to give access to light or darkness. I'm Joseph Zeeb and I recently had the Spirit of the Lord speak to me to write this book, Servants of Fire. It is a last day's prayer, intercession and prophecy manual for how to rise up activate the forces of heaven to work on your behalf. We go into so many things in this book that I know God spoke to me about from his word that's going to greatly impact you and take you forward. The world is crazy. Things are getting wild, but you can overcome with the spiritual forces of heaven right from the manual that's written in this book. We go into everything from dealing with strange encounters, wicked spirits, how to push back authorities that are of dominion of evil and take territory in Jesus. I got to tell you, this book is a must have for your library, a must have. It will navigate you right through these difficult days and you will see victory. You will see results. Did you know most Christians, most believers have everything they need. All they need is a revelation of what they have. And this book will provide that for you. You need it. I'm telling you, it's a now word, a revelation. I'm Joseph Z. I hope you pick up Servants of Fire for your future and your benefit today.